everybody, and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, giving you a special welcome, especially if this is your first time to be tuning into the show. And we are celebrating our one year anniversary. We've been on now for a little bit over a year, and we have over a hundred and thanks to you all, we've got over 150,000 downloads and listens now. So welcome to you. If you're listening on iTunes or Google play, uh, if you're watching one of our YouTube channels or any of the, uh, any of the other platforms that we have out there. So if you're brand new to real estate investing with Jay Connor, we talk about all things, real estate. We talk about commercial. We talk about single family. We primarily talk about single family. But we talk about land, uh, we talk about uh, how to find deals before other real estate investors know they exist. We talk about how to get your deals funded. We talk about how to sell them fast. And most importantly, we talk about automation and we also talk about that real estate that you need to own in between your ears before you can be controlling and owning real estate as we call dirt out here. But I tell you, I've been so blessed to have just amazing guests and experts here on the show. Today is no different, but before I introduce and bring our special guest on today, I want to give everybody a free gift that's waiting on you right now after the show. As you know, I'm known as the Private Money Authority, where I help you and plug you into getting funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience. This funding's got nothing to do with banks. It's got nothing to do with hard money lenders. It's got nothing to do with mortgage companies. We're talking about getting funding from individuals just like you and me. 10 years ago, I was cut off from the banks with no notice. And today I've got 48 private lenders funding our business. So if you would like to learn where to find these private lenders and how to do business with them, I've got a free online class on demand waiting for you to check it out right after the show. And here it is. I'm going to put it up on the video. If you're watching a video, it's www.jayconner.com forward slash money webinar. Jayconner.com forward slash money webinar. Well, moving on to our guest today, I'm so excited to have her. I was just introduced to this lady just a few short weeks ago, and my Lance has she got the story. So this lady, she was born and raised in this really small Southern California town just right outside Pasadena. And I tell you folks, she didn't have a choice. Well, she did have a choice, but she didn't pretty much have a choice. She was uh, surrounded by her parents and her grandparents who are all entrepreneurs. So she was raised in this setting, being in business for yourself. And so she just grew up with being an entrepreneur in her blood. So she, she, she grew up with, you know, just very, very savvy business minded parents and grandparents. So anyway, she went off to college. Well, and after all that, I mean, my land, she's like, much more professionally and officially educated me than me. She's got four degrees, so she's like above my pay grade. But anyway, she worked in retail logistics, as I told you, whatever in the world that is, retail logistics and operations. And she's worked with one of the largest retailers in the world. But listen, folks, it's coming on down to real, real estate investing. Now, to let you know how strong her management and organizational and leadership skills are, at one time before she left that career, she was over 63 stores in Southern California. So obviously she knows how to work with people. She knows how to have systems in place. She knows how to lead a team. So anyway, during that time in her spare time, she found time to really, really pursue her passion, which is real estate, economics, finance, and thus and so. So she got into flipping homes, and one thing that I love about this lady is that she's got the same exact perspective as to when it comes to doing transactions and working with people. And that is, it's got to be win, 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 win all the way around. You all have heard me say for at least a year now, I don't want to do any transactions unless everybody's winning. If there's anybody in the transaction that's not winning, 
personally, I don't want to be involved in it. You all have heard me say when I do a private money deal, the seller of the property won, the private lender won. If I sell it on rent to own, the buyer won. And then I won for, the, for putting the whole deal together. Well, this guest that I have today, she's got the same exact mindset. In fact, her motto, one of her mottos is, when everybody wins, the world is a better place. So with that, folks, I'm so excited to have as my guest today, Miss Ann I'm a grande. Anne, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And first, let me just congratulate you on your one year anniversary. That's such an amazing accomplishment. So congratulations. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, Anne, I understand how you've got this mindset of entrepreneurship and where that came from. But were your were your and by the way, let's just go and give everybody a teaser a little bit. All right. <laughs> so before before we get here, your background, I want to give people a reason to stick around here on the show for the next 20 minutes or so because you are my first guest in the past year. And I've had a lot of very brilliant experts here on the show, but you're my first guest that really has put together a system and you're going to be teaching here on the show, how you're able to do turnkey real estate investing. So take just a moment, explain to people what turnkey investing is, then we'll come back and we'll dive deep on that. But what is turnkey investing? So turnkey investing is essentially where you can walk in and it's good to go, right? So what we're able to provide is, again, as, as I've mentioned before, my, my background is in flipping and we've, we've built in a lot of those systems. So my former career was very systems-based. So I brought a lot of those type of, the ability to build those systems in with me into my, into my career in real estate. And systems is really how we are able to automate and how we can reduce a lot of our employee costs, a lot of our overhead by building in this, autom this automation within your, within, your, within your real estate career. And so by doing so, you can actually create a very systematic approach to obviously finding and buying real estate, putting residents in, making sure that the rehab is all getting done effectively. And you just kind of build out the system as, a, as you go. And that really creates a very low investment as far as time is concerned, which is what we've developed. Right. So we really have two different perspectives that we can be learning from you here on the show. One perspective is, okay, I just want to invest money. So mm -hmm. like, instead of being a private lender, so to speak on a deal, I want to invest. Well, it is sort of a cousin to a private lender. I want to invest in real estate but I don't want to go out and find the properties. Correct. I don't want to rehab the properties. I don't want to get the properties occupied or whatever. I just want to invest my money and get a good return, right? Correct. That's yeah. one and, audience. Yep. The other audience here on the show uh, tuning in could be someone like you that is interested in creating this turnkey real estate investing business and system Mm -hmm. where you're actually the operator and you're the person that's finding the deals if rehab's involved and actually putting it together. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Awesome. So folks, if you're interested in either building a, real, a turnkey real estate investing business, or you're just interested in getting high rates of return passively in either case or all the above. I mean, like I'm both and I'm a private lender myself and yeah. I do the business myself. So, you know, I like sitting back doing nothing and just collecting checks, you know? So I don't see you with your Bahama mama. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I, I like both sides. So back to where I was going originally here a moment ago, Anne. So why real estate? How did you get interested in real estate? How did it all start? It was kind of a fluke. I know that everybody, you know, you always ask people and they say it was kind of by accident. This is absolutely no different. I was working at the logistics company and, you know, I obviously was working 80, 90 hours a week. I was a, I was a manager, you know, high stress, very, very highly intensive job. And, you know, I had a, a good friend of mine who said, Hey, I know you're not happy in your career. Have you ever thought about doing some flipping? And I said, yeah, let's flip a couple of houses together and see how it goes. But if you really kind of backtrack it to the beginning of my life, my grandmother was one of the top agents in Orange County, California. You're talking about being a, a realtor, right? Yes. Yeah. So wow. she was a realtor and one of the top two agents. So uh, she did very, very well. I think her, one of her best years, she did 300 REOs. 
in a wow. year. I mean, she was just incredible. And I remember as a, as a kid, you know, she'd pay us 10 or 15 bucks. We'd go with my aunt and we would vacuum all the carpets and clean all the windows. So that was really my introduction into real estate. And it didn't really hit until I moved into this career. I'm like, oh man, I remember doing all of this stuff as a kid. I've got no problem cleaning windows and vacuuming carpets and tearing stuff out because that's what I grew up with. So it wasn't really, it wasn't really a, a huge transition or a huge learning curve for me to be able to do those things. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, there's all kinds of avenues that you could pursue in real estate investing. Why is it that you have landed on and focus on single family houses? My background is in economics and a lot of that, with that, a lot of it comes with doing a lot of analysis within the economy, within your specific market. So we do a ton of research whenever we're, we're going through, not just what is the current real estate market doing? Where are the interest rates at? But also what kind of businesses are coming in? And as we look at the differences between commercial and your residential, what we've found is that everybody needs a home. They don't necessarily need an office. So as, the, as we start going into the next recession, because it's never an if, it's always a when, right? Correct. So as we go into the next recession, we're gonna start seeing and this is obviously just my opinion, we will see a lot more individuals moving back into their home offices as profits start to decline within their business. So you gotta save overhead, right? They start laying off employees and they start reducing as much overhead as possible. So then we start seeing commercial buildings vacant and then you have to start reducing rents. But that doesn't necessarily help because they still can't afford to move back into the building. So then we have to wait until we get back into, into a good economy again. And so there's a lot of those different things, but what we, the reason that we've decided to do single family is because you're never, your goal is to never let your family go without a roof over their head. If you've got kids, you'll let the car go before you let the house go because that is your family unit and you're there to protect them. And it's one of the, it's one of the, our survival skills, right? We need food, water, and we need shelter. So this is why we've, we've really focused on that. So we help to provide a need that is always going to be needed. We won't always need office buildings. I mean, as, as we're starting to see, we're seeing a lot more of, of the retailers starting to move away from having brick and mortar stores and moving into more online, online focus, but you always need a place to live. And so that's why we kind of, we utilize that as our bread and butter. That yeah. makes sense. So let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit about your turnkey business. So you have people, individuals that invest with mm -hmm. you, and so they're investing in a turnkey product or service. So all they got to do is invest their money. They're going to get, you know, a really, really nice return on that investment. So talk to us about what it is that you and your company does as far as making that product and service available. So what do y'all do to make this, to make this machine, make these homes available for people to, invest in what I'm asking is does your company find them does your company rehab them and then is it long term I mean are your investors investing with you for flipping or have you got you got tenants in there and this is a buy and hold strategy and your investors are investing for you know the long term and what kind of term yeah that, that's an excellent excellent question so the way that our our company operates the way that my company operates is that we are really focused on long-term, right? I never read a book that was called Flip and Grow Rich, right? So what we like to do is we like to create uh, what I call the base, right? So you need a base investment that's just gonna sit there and plug along, right? I'm not looking for the 35% return on your money within four months on a, on a flip. I'm looking to just give you some cash flow along the way and then have those bumps as we sell those properties. And so this is fully automated for our investors, which is what we call a passive investment. So by being passive, our investors are able to allow us to go in and do all of, the, all of the acquisitions. We do all of the rehab, which is necessary, which we've actually coined the phrase, or I've coined a phrase called rentivation. And so we can get into that in a minute. Um, but we do all of the acquisitions. We go in and we do rentivation. We vet all of the residents. We put the residents in and then we manage it for the long term. So we're the true definition of an operator. And then we send our investors monthly, quarterly, or annual checks, a lot of our investors do tend to reinvest so that they can still continue to build. So they're, they're still working toward their retirement, not necessarily needing the cash flow now. 
And so they eventually, you know, start to build some exponential growth within their portfolio. So are your investors, are they investing in one property at the time or are they investing in a portfolio? So all of our investors, what we do is we do it on a property by property basis, investor by investor basis. So rather than doing a syndication where there's multiple individuals pooling their capital for one property, what we're doing is we're helping each investor to build a portfolio for, the, for that specific family. So that way, any decisions that need to be made, if we want to sell the property, if you, you, know, if you have job loss or, or some financial hardship and you say, hey, I need to sell one of the properties because we need our capital back, it's not me going back to a board and saying, hey, we need to cash out one of the properties or we need to get somebody to do it. We just say, okay. And then we go off and we, we actually make that happen for you. So that way the control is always with our investor. And so gotcha. it's always a conversation with you and myself to make sure that we're doing everything that's, that's best for you. What kind of security do your investors get? It's in what sense? In other words, are they being given a mortgage? Are they, uh, so they in, like, they're investing in that property. Mm -hmm. Would you also refer to them as being a private lender? Not necessarily a private lender. It's more of an equity position in, in the home. And so we actually, most of our investors, especially with interest rates uh, where they are right now, I mean, it's, it's insane not to get a mortgage. If you can qualify, it's a hundred percent. I mean, you're leveraging your money at less than 5%. I mean, that's historically, that is incredibly low. Even if we were sitting at six or 7%, it's still incredibly low based on our history over time. So we encourage a lot of our investors, especially right now to take advantage of that opportunity because it won't be around forever. That's number one, but yes, they, they do have an equity position. So it would be a secondary, secondary position on that, on that particular home. So if the, if we, when we actually end up selling the home, obviously the mortgage gets paid back, all of the initial capital gets paid back and then there's profit. So your investors are equity partners. Correct. That is correct. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Now you mentioned a moment ago, an interesting word, mm -hmm. renovation. Yes. And so instead of a renovation, that's correct. A rent ovation. What's the difference between renovation and rent ovation? So renovation is what you do when you flip a home. And so you're putting somewhere between 50 and $40,000, depending on, you know, possibly if you're doing nicer homes, you're putting 60, 80, a hundred thousand dollars worth of work into it. We do low cost renovation, which doesn't mean no low quality. It just means low cost. So we are very specific as to what we do and what we don't change in that home. So when you go into a rental property, a lot of people like this to be very emotional. And so you walk into a home and you're like, oh man, those, those countertops are, are, I wouldn't want to live here because those countertops, you know, let's just put in $7,000 worth of granite. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Do you know what's going to happen to that granite in a year? <laughs> right. It's not, it's not going to look the way that it does now. And also you're not going to live in the home. So why not put a few hundred dollars worth of for MICA versus $7,000. So we go into, we're very strategic and specific. Also, what we do is because we actually are on a lease option. So we do lease options versus straight rental. And so there's a psychological effect of our residents who are looking to become homeowners. And so by having that psychology, we actually allow them to go in and do cosmetic updates. So if they want to paint the home, we give them 100% privilege to go ahead and paint the home whatever color they want because this is their home. It creates a psychological, it creates the psychology of, of a homeowner versus a renter versus a tenant. And right. so all of our residents are under this lease option model. So we don't go in and fix baseboards because that's cosmetic. But what we will do, and this is where the, the renovation comes in, renovation to me is fixing the core four. And the core four are your AC, your roof, your plumbing, and your electrical is the most costly things that you're going to be rehabbing in a home. That's number one, but also they create the good bones for a home. So going back to the win, 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 I want to make sure that I'm giving them a home that has good bones. It, the paint color you can change with a few hundred dollars and you know, a little bit of sweat equity, but fixing the roof, fixing the AC, fixing those large purchases, obviously it's going to fall to the owner, which we are still the, we're still the, the deeded owner on the, on the home, but we want to make sure that we're providing a good core, home for these individuals so that when they go to execute on the option, they've already got a good home. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. What percentage of your rent to own buyers would you say end up cashing out eventually? Right now, I think we're sitting a little over 50%. Oh, that's higher than normal. 
Yes, yeah. it's very higher than our. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So again, we want to create, again, I want to create the best situation for them as possible. So a lot of the individuals that and historically have done lease options has always been, you know, a two or three year option. And then you have to execute and, you know, all, all of these different things. So number one, the reason that individuals are doing right to own or lease or lease to own is because they have a credit issue. They have, they can't, they don't have a down payment. There's not a lot of people that I know that can fix a credit issue, especially a, a significant one in a two year period. So most of our options are anywhere from five, seven, 10 or 15 year, depending on, again, this goes back to the one for the investor, depending on what the, the investor is looking for. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So Yeah. So what we do is we say, okay, as our investor, what is your timeline? What are you? So we do a lot of front end work with our investor to build a plan, build a customized plan for where are you now? Where would you like to get to? And what, what is the, where would you like to get to? Are you sitting on a beach in Tahiti drinking a Bahama mama? And you know, how old are you? Who are you with? So let's build back from that plan and reverse engineer it and figure out what we need to do today to get you there. And whether that be 10, 15, 20 years from now, let's build it out for you. So then after we build out that plan, then we go to work and we actually start doing the acquisition specifically for that portfolio. Gotcha. And then after we, after we acquire the home, then we know on all of these properties that are in your portfolio, we're going to make sure that we're doing those on a seven-year option or on a five-year option. So that way we can, we can kind of cater it to what you're specifically looking for, for your investment, but also providing that exit strategy for you and providing a good option for our, our residents as well. Makes sense. So I've got two questions for you. Yeah, of course. The first question is for those, for uh, the part of my audience that wants to do what you do, and mm -hmm. that is create a real estate investing turnkey business like you have. Yeah. And my follow up question to that will be a question for those that may be interested in investing with you. So mm -hmm. the first question so let's say I'm a real estate investor mm -hmm. and I want to do what you do. What mm -hmm advice can you give me and my audience as to what to be careful about and what does it take to build a turnkey business like you have going on? So I'll answer your second question first. So when we first started the program, you mentioned that the real estate between your ears is the most important. So if you want to start a real estate business, number one, you need to understand that this is no longer a hobby. This is a business. Houses are no longer emotional, they're widgets. And you have to look at it from a profitability standpoint because your business will not survive or even thrive unless your widgets are making money. And so that's what you need to focus on is making sure that this is a business. Number two, find somebody that's doing exactly what you want to do. If you want to flip only REOs or if you want to flip only sub twos or if you want to just do buy and hold, find somebody that's doing exactly what you're doing and ask them to mentor you. There's a lot, that's exactly what I did. I went out and I got education. I found a slew of mentors across the country that were doing exactly what I wanted to do. And then I start picking and saying, okay, I really like the way that you're doing X. I really liked this system. Do you mind if I use this? And you start like building your company and you start building your business based on what other people have already created. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to make it more efficient. You need to make it yours. And so that's what, that's what we've created. And that's how we've been able to develop such a, a unique system is because this is, this is true to my heart. This is, this is who I am. And this is how I run my business. Excellent. So, so bottom line is get a mentor. Don't, don't, I, that's what I would say. You need, don't, try yeah, we, to, uh, don't try to walk through the landmines uh, on your, you know, I tell people you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. Correct. And it's Absolutely. a much cheaper investment as far as cash flow to get a mentor, work with them. So I could not agree with you more. Well, now, not only in money, but also in time. Oh, in I time. Mean, yeah. If somebody can help you to reduce your learning curve, even by a couple of years, imagine what a couple of years of investment now will do for you later. It's just like compounding interest, right? So you put a hundred dollars in now, what is going to look, look like when you're 72 versus if you put it in when you're 60 to 72. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, really just get your education now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, we have time for one last question and this yeah, is this because we're running out of time. Unfortunately, I tell you the time flies by with you, Anne. The it question does. is why would someone want to invest with you and your company? 
I, I guess, say, first of all, the right of return, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, we, we pride ourselves on, on the returns that we're able to get for our investors. And this is why we prefer to work directly with investors versus working with a fund or within a REIT model because a lot of the overhead expenses are just eat away at the return. So your investors are looking to get, you know, somewhere between a four and an 8% return within those investments. But with us, they can, we can reduce a lot of that overhead cost. I would say that, why would somebody want to work with me? Oh. How long you been doing it? Uh, my company has been in, in existence for about five years. So nice. Sorry. And approximately, I know you lost count, but approximately how many yeah. deals have you done? We currently have a little over 50 doors. We're actually closing on one today. So this will be 56, okay. 57, I, some, somewhere in that range. Excellent. So. Excellent. Well, yeah. one thing I know that you're good at, and that is you're good at figuring out whether, a, whether you should invest in a deal or you shouldn't. Yeah. And you mentioned to me before the show that you got a free gift for everybody. And that gift is called the six criteria for investing, right? Correct. So how can people get the free gift, Ann? So they can either go to, they can go to my website and right when it pops up, you can, you can get, you can just order the free download there. Um, you can also email somebody on my staff. I think uh, my email address is, so you yeah, can always email me. I'll have it in the show notes. Of what is your website, Ann? And uh, in fact, for those that are watching the video, we'll put it right up here. What's your website? It's going to be amagrande.com. So it's just my last name.com. All right. So for those that are listening and not viewing, that's www.amagrande.com. And I tell you, you have just been a, a, just a breath of fresh air to have here on Thank the you show. So much. Any parting comments before we call this show a wrap? Yeah, so I had a couple seconds to think about it. And one of the reasons that people like to work with us is a lot of our investors like to brag about their portfolios. And what's awesome is that we are Oz. We're the man behind the curtain. No one ever sees us. And a lot of our investors get to go out and brag about their, their portfolios and how well they're performing. And I love to hear those experiences because a lot of those turn into referrals for me, which is, I heard what you did for you know, Dr. So-and-so, and I would love to, you know, how, how did you make that happen? I'm like, Shh, don't tell anyone, like, I'll, you know, I'll do all the work and you just, you just go get to brag about it. Okay. I love being the, the man behind the curtain. I love, you know, spreadsheets and systems and processes. I'm, I'm a huge nerd. That's, so. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, Anne, thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you so much for offering the free gift to our visitors. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, and another thanks. big thank you to our audience for tuning in. Thank you so much. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you the very best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. And we'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.